This is Off the Break Podcast, presented by Silver Screen Insider. And welcome to Off the Break Podcast. I'm Cody. With me are Kyle and Eric. Hello, Hello. everyone. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, like, like, guys. I just second guess myself. I had to make sure that all the volume levels were good. Eric's checking all the equipment, making you know, sure it's working. After we <laughs> hit record. Well, I usually do it beforehand, and then I was like, oh, wait. Wait. Is it working? No, that's okay. I always check my mic to make sure it's on in like the middle of our <laughs> podcast. Because <laughs> all of a sudden in my head, I'll be like, wait, what if no one can hear me? Well, that's happened one too many times where it's like, oh, it turns out that there is no audio for yep. Kyle the entire episode. Yep. So if you had <laughs> listened to one of those episodes, we're sorry. One of the early, <laughs> early episodes. It was we, like last week. I think no, we got our kidding. act together now. <laughs> it's it, um, got our act together. Sure. Got sure. Our system. <laughs> Got our system down. Um, well, it's going to be a short podcast today. Not a lot's happening in the movie news realm for us to go over. No there's, new developments. There's just been a lot more material stuff that's been coming up, like one sheets and yeah. stills. Yeah, there were a ton of that stuff this week. Bunch of movies dropping posters, trailers, yeah. images. Well, there's a lot on the upcoming slate coming out. I mean, we yeah. got a couple oh, yeah. slow weeks here. Mm-hmm. Like Abominable is just next week. Wide release, Joker the week after that. But then after that, there's like four or five new releases, and then yeah. it just kind of grows from there because it's the beginning of the holiday corridor. Yeah. So crazy. So we've got that to look forward to, and the product all looks really good this holiday season. I th- yeah. No, I'm, I'm excited. I've already... I was going through trying to make my like like my 10 favorite movies of the year so far since I yeah. have enough to actually fill it that I actually can say I really enjoyed, and... There have been some really good movies this year, and hopefully that continues on until the end. I have a good feeling about the fall season, like winter as well as the awards season. Like, there's been a lot of uh, good sounding stuff coming out. Well, so. this year, guys, I think it's going to change some stuff up for your yeah. top 10. I've actually oh, yeah. seen 10 movies by now. So, <laughs> yeah. so I think my list is pretty wrapped up right I have, now. I have That's a 10. list. All my work here is done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I have made much better effort this year. To actually go to the films. And I think this podcast has helped a lot. Because mm-hmm. I oh, do yeah. want to discuss movies ac- having actually seen them. Mm-hmm. So I, I've, I've stepped up my game. <laughs> I've yeah, just I would fallen say so. in love yeah. with going to the movies alone. It's like my me favorite too. thing. Yeah, it, that ha- that's happened to me for the last couple of years. Like I thought that was like the weirdest thing to well, do. I think I everybody does at first. Like, cause, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, you're so conditioned like... The movies are either like a night out with friends or like a first date kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's a social thing. And we mm-hmm. always talk about movies as social events that draws communities together. And we mm-hmm. just make it sound like it, you always have to have people around to go to the movies. No. no. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. People it. are the worst. Go alone. Yeah. <laughs> no. Pick my spot behind the bar, put my right. feet up. Yeah. And then That's where I p- sit, yeah. behind the bar so you can put your feet up. If you know what's going if you if you if you're a veteran of the movie theater, I feel like most people are gonna yeah. know that. Although mm-hmm. that might be a dying act because we just don't have reclining seats in our movie theater. <laughs> if I had a recliner, I wouldn't need that. True. Maybe one day. <laughs> but Maybe. it won't. But it won't <laughs> happen. No, um I like sitting in that same spot i have my spot behind the bar so i can put my feet up on it without feeling guilty that i'm ruining something mm-hmm. i like going alone i always ignore the people i'm with anyways like i mm-hmm. am just a person that focuses on the movie and just drowns everything out and some people go to the movies and kind of chit chat you know or nudge or even hold each other's hands i am like don't touch me <laughs> just <laughs> Yeah. Just let me look at the movie and ignore all of you. I'm glad you're able to ignore people. Lately, I've been having trouble doing that. I've noticed people being a lot more rowdier in the theater <laughs> than usual. I don't know. Like, there I guess a rowdy like, group for me last night, but thankfully they shut up when the previews ended. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, seeing Hustlers, I noticed that. Like, there was a lot of like cell phones popping out and i was like come on really you can't wait two hours all the college kids are back and they don't care yeah i think, hu- I think hustlers just attracted a certain type of crowd and we'll talk about it when it, we talk yeah, about your reaction I'll, I'll agree with that but even still i was like it's two hours like you don't have to be by your phone for two hours people no. are like legit addicted yeah man i i think i'm addicted in some ways like i like the convenience of my phone but there are times i just forget i have it i put it on silent i don't know where it's at 
I'm well, my really phone terrible. does those things like every week. It's like your screen time or your screen usage was down forty three percent from last week for an average of however yeah. long per day. And I'm like, that's not bad. That's I feel pretty bad. good about that. It's like yeah. an hour to an hour and a half. You know, I think the true test of you're addicted to your phone or is if will you let somebody else use it and look through it and mm. <laughs> yeah. I totally would. Like, I don't have anything hidden on there. I so. would, but I'd be like, "You have your own phone." Come I have on. like no. <laughs> I have like yeah. no apps either. And I got words with friends so we could play with my husband. And I did it for like a week, and we play. We played every night, and I'm like, I'm over it, so I deleted it. I always had a thing against mobile games. When I saw people yeah. playing games on their phone, I was like, that should be a Game Boy. That, right? should be a, that should be a DS. Get out of here with that. I play worse with friends way. on a Game Boy, people. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ugh. I, I mean, got so bored with it. I, it's the they're so simple and they're you can never really. I mean, they're perfectly designed for the type of people who play. And I mean, it makes sense, you know, like on the like if you're on the bus or waiting in a. I'd rather read an article. Waiting room. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I yeah. I'm always reading stuff. I I'm do. a reader. I just don't don't do the game. So that's getting deleted. A couple other like apps and i'm like why i don't need radio apps on my phone yeah. <laughs> i don't really use it to listen to music like most people do yeah no, the worst is what i just mainly it's like when i see like little kids at like a restaurant or something playing mobile games i'm like no get that out of there. Uh, give them give them a game boy and play tic-tac-toe on the napkin play tetris or mario <laughs> on a game boy you're definitely not a parent i'm like whatever will distract them <laughs> so that they don't scream in the restaurant and humiliate me mm-hmm we don't take our kids out very often. <laughs> maybe that's Too why much they, maybe that's why they scream. I just think when they're little that you should be taking them to restaurants. Like, There's a certain age. You're six years old. You're not that little. No, and, and my six-year-old does great. I don't... It, I, he doesn't need games on the phone anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about like toddlers. Sure. Babies. I don't remember what I was like as a toddler at the restaurant, so I can't no. really speak to that. Nah, I'm sure it was a nightmare. <laughs> Although even, I was the best baby, they still even only have a short attention span. It, they'll they're very well behaved, but then after a certain point, if food hasn't gotten there yet. Not even those little rights. paper kids menus <laughs> with like strike. word searches, and they only last so long. <laughs> they only last so long, Eric. Yeah, and then they give you crayons, and crayons suck. So. The crayons Thank do you. suck. They're not very good. They're not uh, just all crayons suck. I hate them. Crayons. Really? I never understand crayons the are terrible. crayons either. Thank you. Everything you try and draw with them looks like crap. They don't color very well because there's always those little white spots in between the wax. They feel weird. Ugh. hate the waxy feeling. Get out of here. Yeah, get out of here, crayons. Crayons. Were you a colored pencils man? I was a marker kid, and then I graduated <laughs> Thank to Thank you. <laughs> Someone gets it. Yeah. The fat, uh. the fat markers. And then I was like, oh, they have really skinny fine point markers. But... <laughs> You're speaking my <laughs> language right I had now. the dexterity to make the fat ones make thin little lines. I love so. that our Ooh. conversations always result in <laughs> writing utensils. Writing utensils. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. But Kids we should these probably, days don't understand. <laughs> we no. should probably talk about movies. I really we can don't, talk about movies. I don't want my kids color with markers. Because <sighs> it's wonderful. They have they have taken crayons to my walls and I'm like, no thank you on markers. Get them the crayola washable ones. Ugh. It's gonna be a lot easier to like wash off than like waxy, and, gross crayons. Yeah, but I guess crayons are better for like the furniture because they don't really do anything <laughs> for, on the furniture when they inevitably color the <laughs> furniture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the walls would be better with the washable markers. So just have I, a sit down and be like, okay, now guys, you're yeah. not supposed to do this, but if you decide to color the furniture, please use crayons. Right you decide to color the walls, please use the markers. No, you don't even give them options. They just don't get to color. No, they do. They do. <laughs> they don't get to color. In fact, one of, our no fav- one of our favorite games is Blue's Clues, where they go around and point at things, and we're like, a clue, a clue, and then oh, we yeah. have to draw it. In our, we even have little special notebooks for Blue's Clues. Yeah, but Clues. Steve, when he did that in Blue's Clues, had a fat crayon. And, and I was like, he drew no, amazing. You're, you're done. <laughs> you're not like, drawing anything. Here, yeah, it's unrealistic. Like, There's no way you're going to draw something that precise with a fat crayon like that. That part of Blue's Clues. Cru- Clues is unrealistic, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Not me. the giant talking couch. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just had to be sure. That crayon is way too fat and way too precise. You're not wrong about that. Mail time. <laughs> mail time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Where's the mail? It never fails. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. The whole thing. <laughs> Enough I of this. I got excited about Blue's Clues. I just love how my kids get into things. <laughs> oh, I bet. You get to experience it all over again. Yeah. So Rambo. No, Hustlers. Let's start hustlers? there. Oh, okay. Hustlers? And then we'll get... Yeah, we got three movies stuff. to talk about Yeah, today. let's talk Hustlers, because it, it opened much bigger than anybody anticipated. Yeah. And... You know, Kyle's really excited to go see that stripper movie. He so was excited for a long time. Did it? Uh, the trailer live up looked good. To your the trailer was fine, but Kyle loved that trailer. I was like, Jennifer Lopez is a stripper. Count me in. Well, I mean, I think. Oh, every, I mean, I think everyone was with me at that point. But the theater I was in, there, we were chanting Lopez, Lopez, as she was stripping. Yeah. You know, it was it was a good time. <laughs> really? No, that's not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. I was like, I would that hate that happened. crowd. <laughs> I would leave. That would have been the one time where I'd be like, yeah. (laughs) My fantasies of telling people off would like reach a boiling point. (laughs) Just yelling in the middle of Hustlers. Freaks out, goes down to the front and be like, just everybody shut up. (laughs) Well, honestly, I was at that point too because there were so many people in my theaters like using their phones. There was one point where someone was like Snapchatting in the movie. I was like, what what are you taking a picture of? We need an Alamo draft house. Is it, they forbid the yeah phones, they're the ones right? with like that famous ad where like the woman like they she's recording herself like screaming at them because they're kicking her out because she was on her phone yeah and she's like cussing them out and stuff and then just play that recording <laughs> as their ad <laughs> it's amazing awesome. oh my gosh that would be fantastic uh, anyway hustlers yeah how was the movie itself uh I think it's, it's gonna it, she, Jeez, I am so sorry. Let me start so over. So tongue tied over <laughs> the images he saw on that. So many strippers. Oh. Uh, it's a lot better than I think people are making it out to be. Yeah, um, I'm sure it's getting a pretty specific reputation. Yeah, for, it's like the stripper who movie. Who's going to go to it? Who's going to be that weirdo? Which it's understandable. Like on paper, like it looks like it's that type of movie. Kyle went out of all three and of I us. Went, Kyle went. I gave it a chance <laughs> and it's actually a lot more entertaining than you would probably make it out to be. Um Yeah, no, it's getting really really solid reviews. It definitely is. Um it's a really good story it's based on a true story that was written out as an article a couple of years ago um about these strippers who after the 2008 recession um decided to go into the hustling business and <laughs> hustled their way out of making millions through all these um uh, big corporate types in New York yeah, City. Yeah, Wall Street guys. All the Wall Street guys, yeah. all the crooks of <laughs> Wall Street. <laughs> A real Robin Hood story. Yeah. Um, and it's entertaining. And um, you, despite their backgrounds and what they go through, mind not being ethically correct, you still find ways to be able to latch onto these characters that are, are running the hustling ring. And they're played by Constance Wu and Jennifer Lopez, who both do a fantastic job. Um, headline the movie. Uh, it's entertaining. Like it doesn't feel gross at all when you're watching like the stripper aspects part of it. It's feels more tasteful uh, than gross and disgusting. And I don't know. You'll well, yeah, I think like, people. Oh, that, you go ahead. That was one of its big uh, positive points that a lot of critics pointed out is that you know a lot of it coming from the female director and her female gaze it avoids a lot of that like objectifying sort. Yeah, of I would say so. Lens mm-hmm. that, with through which you see the. The stripping scenes. Yeah. And the director also does a good job at taking the story that was written about these real life people and being able to tell it pretty factually and translating it well as like a movie. Because normally like true stories or biographies, sometimes they bend the rules a little to tell like an an actual movie narrative. And most of the time, yeah. (laughs) Uh, But here it's actually done well to where it's pretty on point. Like if you read the article before or after seeing the movie, like it all lines up very well. And I thought that was pretty... How uh, long cool was that article? Um, I don't know how. Because when you long think article, you know it's you think a magazine or a newspaper, and it's definitely it's definitely long for sure. I mean, I don't know how many pages it is. You can find it online. That's how I found it. So, cool. Yeah. Um, I, if people are wanting to give it a chance, I would say do it. I think they'll get their money's worth and they'll find a interesting story out of it that hasn't been told before. I think what's kind of surprising is that it did better than expected and the type of crowd that came to pl- to see it is not i think a usual movie going crowd no and um but it so, worked though i think the marketing worked. worked for that yeah so that was good i had you know some pretty good feedback from most of the theaters that played it but mm-hmm. some interesting feedback on the type of people that came in and yeah that it was what they quote said was not their normal crowd 
they were a bit rowdier and in a place in some of the places that served alcohol uh, I um, bet. they let's just say had to clean up more right <laughs> <laughs> that's not too surprising what I are some say. of the standout um elements of jennifer lopez's performance because there's been a lot of genuine description of her you know potentially carrying that carrying on towards award season she's very good um in this movie what she does well and as well as what constance Wu does that they're able to give these characters a lot of layers a lot of um dualities to their personalities like when they're going from um good to bad uh, you can see like the subtle hints of them having these changes or if you see them realizing what they're doing is not cor- ethically correct but they're still wanting to do it anyway for themselves and for their families like you see them do they get go corrupted? through the motion as well yeah and you and that corruption works really well as the story goes on they play that well too um but in terms of oscar awards i i don't think it's here for lopez's uh um performance not to say that she wasn't was bad at all which she wasn't she was very good this is like one of the few lopez performances i really enjoyed um i just don't see it being oscar worthy i i i think earlier this year there's a few others i can name that have done better than her this year and i think there's going to be a lot more down the road that are going to rival hers um and it's also september it's too early to tell so for now i just say pump the brakes on it she's really good but oscars i'm not sure maybe people getting a little excited yeah if anything, I would say Wu, Constance Wu would take the edge over Lopez personally, but even still, it's cool. it's just too early. Um, big question. How much is Cardi B and Lizzo in it? It's just one scene. One or two scenes. That's so sad. They're the best part of the trailer. They're uh, in the trailer for like half a second. That's half their a second. whole time. You expect they'd be there more. Uh, some people might think it's jarring. I didn't find it bad at all. I yeah. just... Well, yeah, I just went through the movie. Shoehorn them in and be like, by the way, we have famous people. Do they like they're talk strippers. or are they just kind of in the background? Uh, are they just they like talk. co-workers? They talk, they're co-workers, but they're not a big part. Cardi B makes a little bit more sense because she did come from that background. She actually does did have a reputation of like hustling those that she did strip for. Um, so maybe they brought her in to get, get some advice about that <laughs> and also just to play off of that some. Lizzo, I don't really know why she was there, but whatever. She's famous. That's cool cool (laughs) that she was in the movie um but yeah they're just in there for a scene oh too bad cool well it sounds like there's some you know reasons behind its unexpected success so yeah i would say so it's not one of those moments where it's like oh it's a bad movie but it's the only one out so we have to see it no it's actually a good movie and it warrants why it's done well so far nice well then we shift gears and you (laughs) went to rambo yeah. Last blood last night. Um, supposedly. We'll see. <laughs> That's what I said. I was like, yeah, this always happens. Is this actually the last one? I never believe it. The next one will be called Rambo New Blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's just, that's when the reboot happens or yeah. whatever. I just, yeah, Rambo. I can't believe it anymore. Rambo, like blood of Rambo. Chris Pratt is the new Fresh Rambo. Blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, the, yeah, that'll be the sun comes back Rambo the Jr. surprise I, w- oh I wasn't God, lying it was funny. the end of john rambo yeah. <laughs> get out of here now it's james rambo <laughs> or something i don't know um yeah um okay so i'm just gonna start with this i've only seen the first rambo actually just recently to prepare for this one uh so i don't have much of an attachment for this movie i do really like first blood i think uh it is a really successful action movie as well as a really good drama about a war vet with post-traumatic stress disorder and i think that's done very well in first blood i can't say anything for the other ones um to be honest but going in just with first blood anyway i think last blood kind of does a good job of connecting between first blood and last blood so if you are like a diehard fan of the so first movie i know there's so, so <laughs> much blood uh, so if you are like a fan of the first movie you might be able to get something out of it but for um just action genre fans who just want to see a Rambo, yeah, a Rambo casual movie people. or an action movie with yeah. blood and violence. It's here. It's in this movie. In copious amounts. A copious amounts. Uh, more than I thought, which was surprising. Like a lot of bones show and a lot of blood is splattered everywhere. And the ways he kills people are pretty cool and pretty impressive. I love creative gore. Yeah, exactly. I would say it's pretty creative here too. Some of it pays homage to the first uh, Rambo movie as well. well so, you know, there's that. have tried and true tactics that work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, it also does a good job at trying to have an emotional arc between him and his niece because he's trying to save his niece from a Mexican cartel. Yeah. Um, does the so Mexican what? cartel just take her because she's a pretty girl in a bar, or do they target her? Well, she like goes into Mexico, doesn't she? Yeah, she goes into Mexico to find her long lost. Um, I almost said brother, but her dad, her long lost yeah. dad, um, because he ran off. His her mom passed away, so Rambo is taking care of her. Um, she's his niece, but she's like a daughter to him now, basically, and helps him uh, become a better person than Aww. in the past couple of movies. Um, but she's down in Mexico trying to find him, and then she gets kidnapped by the Mexican cartel to be used for slave trafficking or, or uh, sex trafficking. Pretty much, she's a sex slave. Or yeah. is becoming one. Um, so Rambo has to... It, it gets pretty dark in some moments, too. a lot too, of comparisons to Taken mixed with Logan. Yeah. It's definitely there. Yeah. Not, it's a good combination as, of like describing it. Maybe not as good as Logan, but you can see the, <laughs> yeah, you can see the influence. Probably not as good as Logan. Um, Emotionally. Y- but the kill scenes are probably just as good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I haven't <laughs> seen it, but... Uh, it's, hard, it's hard to tell, for sure. Um... They're definitely creative. Creative, yeah. Logan's just, oof. But they all work. God, I love Logan. Logan's now I didn't such a good movie. movie. Uh, but I don't know. If you like the Rambo movies or if you just want a solid action movie for 90 minutes, or, it, it's here for you. Or you like Sylvester Stallone. Or, yeah, Sylvester and Stallone if you're a fan. pulsing, protruding veins. Not as much as in the last movies, but, you know, oh. he's, still, it's, he's still got it, though. It's just not as <laughs> noticeable as in the past, for sure. So Fair he enough. has to go save his niece slash daughter, and he goes down to Mexico and then comes back. Does he bring the fight to them? Yeah, and then because the trailer makes it seem the like the they fight. come to him. Yeah, but you why know, would they he, come to him? If you know, he she goes went to, the, to them. I can't right. say too much. It will spoil some things. We will talk about this next week in further detail. <laughs> sure. Oh no, I won't. You guys will be here. I'll be gone next week <laughs> and the week after. So I'll t- I'll mm-hmm. tell you guys after the podcast, but um, yeah. for our audience, well, I, j- I just won't spoil it. But you'll see. They come to him. He goes to them. <laughs> you know, it's a compromise. Maybe not in that order. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not bit. in that order. Maybe, maybe it is in that order. You'll have to watch and find out. Like a out. Fury Road type thing. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Could be that. So Could Mad not Max, be that. We've got Logan and we've got Taken all wrapped up into a Rambo movie. I've, s- I've seen some uh, reviews where it's like, Think of it as like taking meets home alone. <laughs> and I'm like, that's so fantastic. He probably goes to them, gets her back, goes back to his place, and for some reason they like, we know we need her. He, she's our best one, and they or, follow him back. Or no one screws with the cartel. <laughs> that's <laughs> Rambo. Honestly, with the way it's written, that could have been a line. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very it, not self-aware, but it's very. Um, obvious to know like what its audience is and what kind of lines they're wanting out of it so it oh yeah work. and i mean other than the first one all the rambo movies are pretty pretty poorly received yeah but yeah the fans know what they want and i guess this one's gonna give it to them yeah i would say so nice it's the worst reviewed of all of them is it yeah in the day and age of reviews and tastes and stuff wait this one is yeah really mm-hmm Oh well, I, I mean, I've never seen any like, of them. Num- but I, strictly numerically, yeah, it's oh, numeric. Well, it's whatever. the lowest, but that's hard to tell because with older movies, then when they get updated, they look at the historical reviews and try and apply them. You know, it's sometimes it's only based on like three reviews for a movie from like the eighties. Yeah, that's so true. That stuff's always hard to tell. And that's yeah. only the main reviews that you got from the major publications when they screened it, like New York, L.A., and yeah. one others. Hmm. But maybe I mean, trade. bottom line, the Rambo franchise isn't the, the most <laughs> acclaimed series. Well, but. if Hollywood allows it, this might be the last one, so we won't have to worry about new ones being worse. We just had new blood and and Son come of Monday blood. if we see if it you know makes a decent amount Fresh of money. Blood. If it does, it's not the end. I think theaters should Dark definitely blood? play this. I just don't know how much Ooh. money they'll get out of Rambo, it. Rambo Dark Blood. I think they need medical attention then, Rambo, don't they? Fate of the Blood. No, because it's Fate like, of the Blood. Now we're just doing <laughs> Fast and Furious. <laughs> now we're doing Fast Dark and Fate Furious titles. And putting them together. Dark. Oh, I was th- <laughs> then, that, then that made me think of Dark Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, why? Uh, that Risen one makes me from sad. the Blood. Yeah, you can do a lot with Blood. 
Yeah, you can do a lot. <laughs> okay, Eric, yeesh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jeez, man. I, I didn't think of it that way, but He's I guess. taking those serial killer shows to heart. They're great. <laughs> he loves his serial killer yeah. shows. Hey. Um, speaking of serial killers, should we talk about Ad Astra? Yeah. Also, they have nothing in common. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, that's that's a transition. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was I was super excited for Ad Astra for a long time because, you know, I love space you and I love your meta sci-fi movie. Yeah, I wanted like a thought-provoking kind of introspective philosophical sci-fi movie, and that's totally what I got. But I was, I I never go into movies with like like set in stone expectations. But I I would be lying if I said I expected this to be as half and half between like artsy and mainstream as it was i was expecting it to be a little bit more like i don't know abstract i guess but it actually surprisingly it wasn't it has this really cool really good pace between the smaller kind of reflective introspective scenes where brad pitt is kind of there's a voiceover in it and i haven't i haven't seen a movie with a voiceover in a long time i realized when i was watching it um, Literally, so, you didn't see Dark Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't Once Upon a Time have a voice over, voiceover? There was like the, a couple the, meta Kurt Russell like interruptions, but yeah, but like a traditional voiceover that like you know right. makes you feel like you're reading a book almost. Um, but it goes. It there's a good pace where it'll have the the slower downtime, and then there'll be like a pretty you know, action blockbuster type set piece. And those are all really great. Were like, the space buggies shooting lasers awesome? Seems intense. <laughs> like th- those are like, like moon pirates, like in no man's land. And like, <laughs> that's even better. Moon yeah. Pirates there's like a big shootout. Space and buggies. It was great. Oh, <laughs> I, but it's all like silent because you're in the moon. Right. So you just hear like the f- bassy vibrations. And I was like, I've never seen a scene like this before. This is cool. But the movie is kind of like Apocalypse Now or Heart of Darkness in Space. So it's kind of like, it's very much a character study of Brad Pitt's character. Because it's not about him finding his dad. It's all the stuff in between. Um, it's a really hard movie to describe without giving anything away. But yeah, it was it was great. <laughs> it was one of my favorites. I feel like maybe it suffered a little from marketing. Like they, It sounds like they didn't know how to market it. What? Well, this always happens. Right. And this is why genre has a really a big downside to it because when people think of genre movies, there's a lot of tropes that go with different genres. Yeah. And when you have to advertise something, you kind of have to play into those, even if they're not necessarily there. To attract people. Yeah. And I knew that this was going to be that type of movie. I'm expecting it to be for a, a disappointment, you know, box office wise. Like, it probably won't make as much as they are hoping um that always happens but it's a very well done movie i think and and creative oh yeah it's it's always great to see these like major studios back a movie like this because you know so many major studio movies they have to appeal to as many people as possible and what that ends up doing is they have to take as little risks as possible to you know, maximize the amount of people that will go see it. They don't want to turn anybody away. Do you think we'll see a film like this? Because technic- it was Fox. It was greenlit by Fox. It was developed and produced by, you know, teams mm-hmm. from Fox that Disney now owns. Yeah. <laughs> I probably won't see another movie like that again. And probably not, at least for a while. So I, 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 And I knew that going in. I was like, okay, this may be one of the last, like, pretty unique like risk-taking major studio yeah. movies for a, a good while and I was very I was very surprised and satisfied with it. How was Brad Pitt in it? Brad Pitt's great. Brad Pitt is it's a very understated performance in the first like half, but as he gets closer to his father deeper into space, more isolated, you know, he starts kind of breaking down and his shell comes down and you see kind of all of the complexities that he'd been walling off from everybody. And it's really, it's really good. Brad Pitt, like we've said before, is he's just like a movie star of the highest order. Like you can't take your eyes off him. Yeah. He just, he commands the screen whenever he's there and you know, he's there in every scene. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And it's a beautiful ending too. Like he's, there, there's a lot of catharsis in his, 
his, his journey's end. And hmm. he does find his father at the end. Or does he not? He does, you know. Okay. I mean, but that's not the point of the movie. No. And his father's played by... Tommy Lee Jones. And how... Does he give in much performance on it? How or? crappy yeah, I mean, he's, is he? He's in, <laughs> he's in there He's in there a very little amount, but he makes the most of it, and it's just kind of sad. I gotta be really. honest. I forget his name because I call him Grumpy Cat. Well, yeah, well, I mean, he, he kind of has a reputation among, like, fans and paparazzi, and yeah. he's kind of... Yeah, he's a crabby old man. Well, that's okay. Right. But it, it? does it come through his performance or is he like, is his character just, I'm just kind of interested in his character. Is it like lost? Is he broken? Cause he is oh, he's he very super, broken, super isolated. He's in broken space? and obsessed. Yeah. And you could say crazy, crazy. You could, but I'm not giving he anything away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, he's obsessed with the idea that he just can't, be, he can't accept the fact that we're, all alone in the universe. And the movie uses space mm. as like a great allegory for yeah. very like humanistic ideas. Like what does it mean to be all alone? Not only as a species, but like as a person, like yeah. it gets at very, very, very deep things. Hmm. I could see where that messes with human psyche to mm-hmm. its core because we are so programmed to be social creatures. That's how our biology is based. That's how yeah. our evolution has come through. That's why we're the dominant species. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't work in isolation. Yeah, I mean that's his whole thing. Like they use the the idea of intelligent life out there. The dad's obsessed with finding it, and it drives him to insanity because he he just can't accept the fact that we're likely all alone, and the effects that that had on Brad Pitt's character because. You know, at the beginning, it's established that he kind of abandoned Brad Pitt yeah. and his mom, which, in a sense, left Brad Pitt all alone. Yeah. And so it gets at things of like inherit, like the sins of the father against the son, and you know the things that parents do to the kids, and how things can repeat themselves, oh. and how you have to try and like break the cycle. Oh. Do you think most audiences will be able to pick up on those type of things? Or are they going to want more Moon Pirates? <laughs> driving space no. buggies. I mean, Brad Pitt's voiceover does a really good job at making those pretty clear without like ex- sitting the audience down. Like, okay, this is what the movie's about. Right? Okay, right. it's it's all it's all done very well, and I feel like audiences will, at the worst, probably be like, "This movie's trying to be deep, and I I don't care." Yeah, you know, they'll probably close themselves off before. Yeah without really trying to consider what it's getting at. But if you go in, you know, prepared and willing to think about those things, right? I think it's a very rewarding experience. I'm just wondering if it'll kind of be a similar thing to some people had with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. With all with the cool Tarantino dialogue and violence? Uh, th- th- that they would be hoping for that, but instead yeah. they get a much more... I mean, that yeah. always happens with movies. Sure, I'm just wondering if yeah. it's going to... It's definitely going to be here. one of those movies. Okay. It'll probably have like a... C cinema score or something. Oh, it wasn't right. Well, and that's interesting because the cinema scores that you see um, published in trade publications after the movie comes out is basically a barometer of if the marketing, yeah, marketed to the right group. And yeah, did people get the movie they were got, expecting? Yeah, if they yeah. get the movie they were expecting. No, so and like, that's probably not going to happen. Yeah, like this happens all the time. Like examples that come to mind are like the movie Drive. Or The Witch, or a lot of those A24 Mother. movies. Mother. Mother had the worst cinema score in history. Yeah, like one of two and Fs, and I think it was the first F. Yeah, and it's just because it, it they p- very poorly marketed. It was not well, that Well, that's what film. I'm saying. And a lot of times, people yeah, the marketing is poor. Tough to market too. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's why when people think of genre films, they think of the tropes. They think of like space, lasers, you know, jetpacks, yeah. spaceship fights. Sounds but cool when to the me. movie isn't like that, but you're forced to market it as close to that as possible. It's not like Captain Marvel. People are inevitably going to be Does Brad disappointed. Pitt get flame mohawk? No. And superpowers? No. I mean, he, if he... Well, that's a bummer. Bummer. <laughs> if, you consider ca- score. <laughs> if you consider genuine emotional catharsis a superpower, then he does. No. No. Laser powers, Eric. F minus, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, F minus. No, thank you. I would say empathy is a superpower. I hope people are willing to give it a shot anyway. Looks interesting. No, there's a lot of people at the theater. You know, I was really? kind of, oh. I was hoping it was just going to be me and like a few other people. <laughs> yeah. But, 
you know, it was a big group and inevitably some people I could tell were just a little bit like confused or sure. maybe bored. Yeah. But then other people were like the people who I, I'm guessing kind of were thinking about what it was saying. I think they had a, they had a good time. I asked you before the podcast, cause we always come in Friday mornings and discuss what we're going to talk about on the podcast, but we always like to give each other, like just to talk about the movies we saw the night before. And I was like, one of the questions I asked Eric was, is this Brad Pitt's Renaissance? Like, are we, in I the really hope dude, it's like, dude, we were talking same. before once upon a time, he hasn't really been in a whole lot. At first I thought the last thing I saw him in was, um, 12 years of slave, but then I realized he was in, um, uh, Fury. Uh, oh, that's right. 2014. Yeah, I remember that. And he was really that was good only one, that, too. That was only one year after 12 Years a Slave, so that's still a yeah, while Yeah, one or ago. two. Sure. Half a decade. But I mean, still, I hope, because Brad Pitt is back, and he is better than ever. Like, both this and Once Upon a Time, but, you know, this one, too, he's a completely a leading man. Yeah. And, like, he's, the whole movie is him. You know, it's one of those movies where every single shot or at least every scene has him as the focus. Like 90% is him. Mm -hmm. okay. And he covers a lot of different emotions by maintaining that understated uh, mm -hmm. method. So It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny because headlines for Joker right now are like, oh my goodness, 90% of the movie is Joaquin Phoenix. And it's like, Ad Astra is also yeah, 90% like that, that of That happens Brad a Pitt. lot of the time. It's, it happens. It's... <laughs> yeah. It's movie. It's okay. It's not a big deal. It's not a headline and worthy you would thing. I hope that it would be with Joker because the film, yeah exactly. Film There's is only twenty percent of him, and, <laughs> they, and he plays the Joker character. Like, come on. It's, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he'll be nominated for Ad Astra because I'm pretty sure he's like a lock lock in for supporting actor for Once Upon a Time. Ooh. And I don't think the Academy allows double. Nomination, oh, maybe I think they do. Maybe it in depends. different categories. In I different, think you can be nominated yeah. for. Okay, yeah, that's so maybe he could for this I'm too. I'm sure it's different categories and it's different studios too. Yeah, because so, I remember like yeah, at the, at the studios, Golden yeah. Globes in I think 2007, Leo was nominated for Best Actor two for two different movies. I think it's Blood yeah. Diamond and The Departed, but the Oscars oh, don't wow, allow those that. Were both in the same year. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, those, those are great, great performances yeah, they too. Jeez. Um, Leo's always killed it. I know, uh, but the two in one year, that's awesome. But I mean, if Brad, I could see him being nominated for Best Actor. That'd make me happy. And then Supporting Actor for mm -hmm. once. That would wow. be, that would be really good this year. Peak Pit. It may, Peak Pit. I wonder <laughs> though if, and this is something we'll have to watch in as we get into award season, but it'll be interesting because Fox and Searchlight are now owned by Disney and yeah. our, are people going to want to, because they'll be rewarding Disney for this stuff. Like, yeah, you know, is that going to hurt the, everything's so different prospects now? Because, um, people just want to be like, mm, we just don't want to give Disney the awards that yeah. they so clearly tried to buy a friend, you know, a studio for. It's possible. Unless if, if people the take like the ethical stand over just the movie itself or the separate art from business. Yeah. Hopefully a lot of politics play into, <laughs> who actually wins so, so much more yeah. so than just pure performance mm -hmm. you know like why leo won for revenant and yeah, not it's like, any well, of these other it was the, it was the people really it was a great performance but it's it was a probably meme the for leo to finally yeah. get his oscar it's like the people want this obviously right. someone else will give it to him still a good performance not nearly but as it's best. weird though because everyone thought that for glenn close last year and then it went to olivia coleman yeah, yeah. i mean it sometimes so it, it, it's hit and miss but it, it most of the time is the hits of politics playing in yeah which is, you don't hope is for, but... the weird purchase going to hurt it could i didn't think about that and that makes me sad because yeah. i don't you think know, it the, would, the, but the movies and wouldn't. the performances are just kind of left in the dust while the while the white collar suits go and have their dealings yeah i think this is the year well obviously it's the year but i think this is where we'll see uh how it works or maybe it'll just at least be the testing ground for disney to see how they play yeah because uh, this is the first that. oscar since that was finalized right yeah because they were yeah it was wrapped everyone up knew then. it was gonna be a thing last time last award season but yeah probably wrapped up a couple of weeks after now it is a thing so yeah that is really interesting so hopefully the voters Fox think of the distributed Bohemian, artwork. right? Yes. So they got some recognition for mm -hmm. having done that. So, and then they would follow up this year with Ad Astra and Brad Pitt performing. Wouldn't it wouldn't be 
a surprise if it if he won or was in contention or at least nominated. Mm-hmm. But I just wonder how you know everybody tries to be give a little to every studio and yeah. they don't like one studio just totally dominating everything. Although we do see that sometimes. It's usually a smaller studio. Like Searchlight had um, Shape of Water. Yeah, they killed it that year with yeah, that three billboards and yeah. I think there's one other big player. But. That was always, you know, its own kind of offshoot, small thing. Now that that's kind of cool, then because that's like the the little guy, right? But or is it going to maintain its little guy reputation now that the parent company is Disney and not Fox, <laughs> the biggest guy? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, this year it's going to be especially interesting just by how crowded it's shaping up to be. Um, if you read some of the um, articles, post all these awards. Um, shows that are not yeah, like the recaps shows, but all these all the recaps of the uh festivals. film festivals for the past like week and a half like there's a lot of stuff that's going to be a major player oh, yeah. in the coming months so maybe it's just going to be so crowded that it's not going to be noticeable or maybe it will matter it'll and filter. disney will yeah, it'll yeah filter it down. could filter so we always it'll be like interesting this, like oh there's so much good stuff coming out and then you realize it's really not as good as what festivals make it out to be and then, <laughs> well it's you know yeah. sometimes it's good but it, it, yeah that's true everyone's always like it's anyone's game everything's I, up in the air well we should go back and listen to old podcasts but remember when we were doing our predictions and i said oh, yeah. remy malik for you know um bohemian rhapsody mm-hmm. we're like oh that's our dark horse i wonder if it was about this time of year maybe like no i feel like it would have been um after its performance because it was getting a lot of buzz before. Was it getting before? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, after. and with those kind of movies, you can okay. usually tell like it's a biopic, it's a famous celebrity, it's yeah. you know. We were worried that it was going to a get transformative hurt. performance where the actor like right before it came out, we were worried it was going to get hurt because of the whole director Brian Singer oh, issues. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and so we thought that people would either be turned off or it would be right, punished. and that's why we've been and that was the narrative. But then it it didn't. Sure. Sure. Because Hollywood are hypocrites. I, <laughs> whenever we talk about um, in the awards season, whenever we have articles like kind of highlighting what's been going on or what changes have been happening, it always makes me laugh. Like at the start of it, we're like, oh, yeah. man, it's <laughs> heating up. And it's and then like in the last <laughs> so final, different. we're like, OK, here's another. Let's just get this over with. It's between these two movies like it always is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen again this year. Neither one of them up, are guys. really our favorite, but. It is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's gonna happen the exact same way again. And for whatever reason, I can't wait. We have awards amnesia, and we always forget well, yeah, how oh, yeah, they get. And then we get excited. <laughs> We're like, yeah, let's let's reward somebody for being a really good movie this year. And then, and then you get just, fatigued after yeah. a week or two, and, and then it like, finally goes you. away, and then it starts up again. It's like, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna the do cycle. it all over again. Yeah, it's already it starting with Ad Astra. Ad Astra <laughs> Bring it on. It. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, the only other new movie that I mean, none none of us saw is the Downton Abbey movie. Yeah, um, I hear it's doing really, really good. It yeah, great no, there pre- was pre shows last night. A lot of families and older people flocking into that theater. Yeah, because it's PG. Yeah, there's nothing inappropriate going on in that movie no. except for maybe someone who'd be like, "We get out of the damn room!" Yeah. <laughs> it's like, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> yeah. It's a movie, all right. Yeah, that wasn't in the <laughs> show. <That> <laughs> acting. <laughs> Yeah. They're really angry. I think this movie is attracting a lot of people, but it's attracting diehards. Like you either oh, really yeah. like this. Oh, this is for this movie, yeah. this show, or you don't. Like I have no interest to see this. Well, I mean, the show whatsoever. when it was running always. I mean, it was kind of a joke at how true it was, but it it attracted a v- pretty older demographic. Yeah. yeah. And but it's highly popular. Older people aren't really the kind of people to like flock to the theater opening weekend. So it'll be kind of sure. interesting because maybe I'll play. You know, longer. several sources that I, you know, I've researched have said that you know this will take number one, and I can see that happening. But yeah. when I think of the target demographic and their kind of movie going habits, it doesn't necessarily line up. Well, but it, it's PG. Rambo's are so you're only true. And it's very male orientated, so you're only gonna get <laughs> older males to that. Ad Astra is, hits the sci-fi artsy crowd a little wi- a little bit more, but it is PG thirteen, right? Or is it R? I, I think it's remember. R. There's pretty what gory scenes. Then. I'll I'll check it for you guys. A baboon. Yeah. Ooh. A space monkey. 
Just a, a baboon. Is it Russian? A Norwegian baboon. Oh. It's a space astronaut monkey. Oh, PG-13. Yeah, I thought, I it, thought was it was R2. Oh, okay. So it's PG-13, and then you've got Downton, which is PG, so very accessible, all audiences. Like you said, families can take them. Um, yeah, there were a lot of little the, kids that went, who I suspect were being dragged there by yeah. their like, grandparents. But the Downton Abbey? <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I know. Ooh. I was like, is that little kid going to get anything out of this? I don't really think that that God, either he's gonna seven-year-old or... girl saw six seasons of Downton Abbey. Either they're going to take a nap or they're going to run around that theater amped up. I could see where it would be. Enough. But where I think it'll really It'll probably shine. get them to the theater. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know how many people are going to like it other than Die Hard's. Because I'm not sure how it relates to the series. Because I know it's like a conclusion. But a lot of times with those type of things, they'll try really hard to make it also accessible to newcomers while yeah. also ending the whole thing. I think that's what it's supposed to do. Just be a finale that takes place it, post season whatever. I don't think whatever, it's accessible to season. new people. I think it it's playing to just the people yeah. that like it. But where I was going with it was I think it'll have legs. I think that next week we've got Abominable, which is just purely little ki- yeah. little little. Oh, kids. it'll definitely have legs. And then the week after that is Joker, and that's pretty R- Male dominated again, mm-hmm. so you know it's got maybe it's like a good to have a three. High opening though. The like older, the mil, older, the older crowds who are in no rush to get to the theater. No. It's the perfect counter programming. They're For gonna the know that it's weeks. gonna be there. Yeah. Like, oh, we can, we can check it out. Oh, Downton Abbey, that's in theater. I'm still thinking. About yeah, it came out three weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> let's go see it. I'm still thinking about. <laughs> What do you think will happen in the movie? <laughs> and you get out of the damn room! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, why that like, keep... that's like the like the peak of the intensity. Whoa! There's the Oscar scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, everything else is you know it's pretty tame. Yeah, it's very. Sure. I don't know. I'm not trying to crap on the movie, but like that was always kind of a joke too. Like different, like How sure. I Met Your Mother had jokes about Downton Abbey, where like. You know the the drum the height of the drum is like them drinking their tea oh, and getting right. an argument across that, the table. They have that fake Downton Abbey show that they yeah. watch. That's <laughs> right. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but I think when you guys put it that way, I think you're right that it's gonna have uh, legs more than people would think. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those rare mid range budget, you know, mm-hmm. films that actually I think works for a while. That keeps hanging around. Yeah, they can't. The ones that um, you just consistently get enough people yeah. to that keep, to keep it on screen. And maybe there's a handful of people out there who are like, oh, I, I always wanted to watch that show. Right. Maybe I should, maybe now's the perfect time. So they're going to watch it when Spoilers. they finish it. Then they'll go see the movie. Right. Well, they um, also didn't go super wide. I mean, they went v- fairly wide. But I know a lot of smaller locations that are getting it later. And yeah. they're just telling their people to wait. Yeah, kind of know? trickle down. Because it, it really isn't a film that you have to rush out and see. Yeah, it's not going to so, be the pop, like, zeitgeist event. Yeah, so I feel like... It's it, no it, end game, but it's, it's going to be close. <laughs> it's going to be really strong for people off the break and yeah. down, you know, down into o- middle of October mm-hmm. when it, a lot more of the R and, and scary stuff comes out. Yeah, I can see that. Cool. Well, those are your three choices. Yep. Go see Choose him. wisely. Ad Astra, <laughs> Rambo, Downton Abbey. It's a good weekend this weekend. Pretty diverse slate to choose from. Yeah, there's a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah. And that's all you can hope for. And I went saw <laughs> none of it. <laughs> <laughs> Cody no, was I'm busy. Gonna, I'm going to try to eh, see Yeah, you Rambo. got your 10 movies. I think <laughs> yeah. after, uh, out of those options, I kind of want to see Rambo. Although Ad Astra Rambo's probably going to be a lot me. more of your type of movie. What are you saying, Eric? I'm saying you love Bad Boys, and I feel like Rambo's closer to Bad Boys than Ad Astra is close to Bad Boys. Yeah, but and you I don't and you didn't like, like First movies. Man, and you yeah, and I was just gonna say you insist that you didn't like First I Man. I don't. Even though I remember the day after you saw, it, you were talking about how it like moved you to tears, and it you did. thought it was a great movie. I felt manipulated. If you're manipula- manipulated not. by reality, I guess <laughs> <It's> everything <laughs> manipulates no, you. No, First Man was great. Like it was done well. Add great like soundtrack to it. I just didn't like the. Feel like you're like this movie was soundtrack. gonna disappoint a lot of our theaters. It's not a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's my hunch. Fine. <laughs> Which is fair. It is Eric's on to you. And fine. I'm not boring. <laughs> boring. <laughs> but it sounds like Ad Astra's got more. Ad Astra is definitely it. not it's as quote pirates. unquote boring as yeah. First Man, but it's it's still a slow meditative paced movie but it has a few more like action scenes like the yeah. baboon or the moon buggy chase okay 
You guys want me to do the thing? Yeah, do your plug. All right, I'll do the plug. <laughs> Uh, so people, if you want to hear more of our podcast, please check us out on, um, all the podcast platforms, yeah, so I believe. iTunes, Google podcasts. Yeah. All the, all that stuff. Plus it's also on silverscreeninsider.com. Um, and be sure to use that to get our podcast as well as, uh, see all the, um, movie information that we have in our database, uh, for all the upcoming films, like whether you're a theater owner who needs the materials in order to keep their business running, or if you just, uh, want to catch up with what's happening in the movie business or just see the reviews that we've been talking about just now, uh, yeah. you can do all that there. Go check All out, in one place. Go check out Kyle's review of Rambo and Eric's review of Bad Astro. Hooray! <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. well, have a good weekend. Bye.